We're in the home stretch. Let's create two different endings for our game, losing and winning, and let's code them up. Then we'll publish our game to the Scratch community and beyond. I'm going to start by creating some very simple you lose and you win screens. So we'll go to the stage, backdrops. I'm going to paint a new backdrop with red. I will draw a very simple message. Let's get a thicker line width. And I'll name this you lose. I'll paint another one in green. You win. With the yellow ball selected, the scripts tab, we'll adjust this part of the script to trigger the losing screen. We will switch backdrop to, to you lose, and then we'll trigger the win by getting another control if then block, the equals operator, the backdrop name equals four, to switch the backdrop to you win. Okay, and for the you win condition, let's make our guy bigger. Okay, so that means he is at this xy coordinate. He's pointing in the direction 137 degrees. And from looks, we'll get his size, which is 225. And then here, for now, that's the end of our game, so we'll stop it right there at level four. All right. Now, if I had time, I would add power-ups that let you fire missiles at incoming threats, and I'd add threats that, you know, shoot at you, or every time you bump into the wall, the threats turn to face you, or something like that. You can mix and match what you've learned in other videos, or go online and find out what other people have done with their Scratch projects. Well, now we have a Scratch project that works. Let's share it. Let's click this share button. Now let's type some instructions and credits. I also added a few tags down here. So let's go brag a bit online. We'll click embed, and then down here we have these new share options. I'll click the Facebook icon. I'm already connected to my Facebook account. You may need to log in, but I'll say, I made a cheerful maze game with Scratch. Well, it's cheerful unless you touch something red, in which case you die. I'll share that. And there we go. Now, we'll go back, click Embed it again. Well, let's try Twitter. There it is on Twitter. I can also embed code on a website. Before I embed it on my website, though, I'm going to come up with a better title. So I've called this Yellow Ball Maze Game. And now I'm going to share that by embedding this code on my weblog. Now, if you're using a WordPress blog, you'll need to know you'll need a plugin called Unfiltered MU in order to let this embedded code work. As you can see, here I am on my blog playing this game. Oh, he's too big to fit through there. Well, I'll have to fix that later. Well, I don't know about you, but after all that, I am pretty exhausted. So here on the Scratch website, I have created a studio called Building Games with Scratch 2.0. Let me add our Yellow Ball Maze game to that studio. There we go. The Scratch community is a great place to connect with other Scratchers. And of course, you can share links to your own published Scratch projects via any social network that you want. In this series, we've made some cool games and we've explored some of the powerful new additions to Scratch 2.0, notably the new video camera input and the vector tool set and object cloning. It's really hard to believe that all that is free. So thank you, MIT, for creating Scratch and for giving it away. If you want to see still more, we have a series of bonus videos that explore how to use Scratch's vector animation tools to create high-quality animations. You'll find those videos on my YouTube channel, www.youtube.com slash dgjurs. I'd like to thank Pact Publishing for giving me the chance to share this adventure with you. I hope you had fun making games with Scratch 2.0, and I hope you picked up some computer science principles along the way.